So what happens when you have a Sudoku puzzle that you've filled in all of the hidden pairs and all of the unhidden pairs and you're still stuck? In this circumstance, you have to use conditional logic. What is conditional logic? Conditional logic is selecting one of two possibilities and following one possibility and looking for an inconsistency, something that cannot happen, or following both possibilities and finding a consistency, something that is the same, i.e. a number in the same square in both possibilities. In each of those, you will be able to move forward in the Sudoku puzzle if you find them. That's what I mean by conditional logic. Now, I used to think that that was cheating, and indeed it would be if you followed one possibility all the way through for all of the numbers, but we're being a lot more refined than that. In the example I want to show you, I want to describe how you follow a single chain, and in the, ex in the particular example, you will see that we will find a consistency and because of that, we'll be able to establish conclusively that one number is in one place. And you will benefit a lot if you've seen my other two videos, Become a Sudoku Expert in 10 Minutes, and Sudoku Expert Identifying Hidden Pairs, uh, if you um, watch those first, before watching this one. Okay, so here's another very difficult puzzle. We've put in all the unhidden pairs and the hidden pairs and we're still stuck. We're only going to be able to move forward by using the single chain logic to identify the next number. Now before I get into the refined logic I just want to show you this work area that I've created at the bottom of the puzzle. You should have some room somewhere in the puzzle to do that. If not, take a separate sheet. And we're going to be using this to follow the implications through of the numbers that we choose. And we're going to choose sixes. Now, what are the s pairs of sixes on this puzzle? Well, we have a six here or here. We have a six here or here. We have a six here or here. And we also have a pair of a five and a six here, or a six and a five another pair of a 3 and a 6 here, or a 6 and a 3, and another pair of a 3 and a 6 here, or a 6 and a 3. Now the traditional way to indicate single chains is by using two colours, one colour to indicate one possibility and the other colour to indicate the other possibility. Well, the problem with that is that you only have so many colours and if you use a work area like this it's going to rapidly become impossible. So I'll show you an alternative. We'll indicate one possibility by putting the numbers to the left side of the square and another possibility by putting the numbers to the right side of the square. So we're going to start off with the two squares here. There has to be a 6 in this square or well, there has to be a square in this square. Let's see what happens if there's a 6 in this square. So we're going to put a 6 in the left hand side here. Note the left hand side. So back up to the grid. If there is a 6 here, remember there's a 3 6 pair here, so there cannot be a 6 here, there has to be a 6 here. So we're going to indicate a 6 in this square, in the left-hand side. Also, if there is a 6 here, there cannot be a 6 here, there must be a 6 here. So we'll indicate a 6 in the left-hand side here. And that's as far as we can go with that chain. Now let's follow what happens with a 6 here. So we're going to put a 6 in the right hand side here. Now what follows? If there is a 6 here, remember we have a 5-6 pair here, there cannot be a 6 here, so there must be a 6 here. So I'm going to put a 6 on the right hand side here. 
if there is a 6 here there cannot be a 6 here remember there's a 3 6 pair so there must be a 6 here and now you can see that we have a consistency with either possibility of the 6 being here or here we have to have a 6 in this square here that would be this square here so that is how you can use a single chain to move forward in a difficult Sudoku puzzle. Following single chains is what I would describe as the easiest of the tough strategies for solving Sudoku puzzles. Remember, what you're looking for is an inconsistency in one possibility. An inconsistency would be two numbers the same on different squares within one row, one column or one square, which is clearly not possible. So you can, can eliminate that possibility. Alternatively, you would be looking for a consistency, which would be the same number in the same square, whichever possibility you chose. And that's what we saw just now with the six. Which number would you follow through for a single chain? I would suggest look for the numbers that have the most consequences when you try and follow these single chains through. So I hope you were able to understand that. I'm sure it will help you in future puzzles. And the next time I'll talk to you, I'll explain to you how we can follow double chains.